Thank you guys. Uh, so let's go move on to summary functions and maps. So here basically uh, it's more about just representation or uh, again, as the word says, summary of the entire data set. So when, whenever you are getting a new data set, you need some sort of a description or an idea about what kind of values that particular data frame or each of the columns have. Or let's say that uh, the data is given in a very raw manner or you are using it in, the, in a different manner. So you need to rename this or you need to modify the data in the format that you want it. So these functions are actually used there. So let's look into this, whatever it is. Um, We'll just, this review is the same data as we had in the uh, last case as well. So we'll not get into that. It's the same wine uh, review data from Twitter. Uh, now, the summary function. So the very first function is describe, okay? Now here, if you see this particular thing, we can uh, make sense of this very easily. That's one good thing about Python. It's very intuitive. So reviews is your data frame dot points. Okay, this is one of your columns. So basically data frame dot column dot describe. Okay. So when I say that, what basically do you expect it to describe? It'll describe this particular column. So whatever kind of data it has. So since we know that the points uh, basically range from zero to hundred based on that, we have a rating. So we have a mean value for it. We have quantiles. So quantiles are basically like top 25%, 50%, which will be your median as well. And then 75%, you have the mean value. Similarly, you have the max and the minimum value. So these are some of the properties. So that basically it tells you in what range your data will be, what is the highest 25 percentile, what is the mean, median mode, all those sort of things are provided in the description. So this gives you a picture of what kind of data you have. But it is not constant for all the data types. For example, if you look at taster name, so that is basically the name of the, uh, that column contains name of different people. So what it has is firstly count that how many values are there. Now, why is it saying so? And secondly, why it has only this uh, 103, uh, 27, whereas our data set has some close to 130K. Reason is this will not count the NAN or not a value. So if it's a null sort of a uh, value, then it will not consider that. So how many actual values are there? Okay, firstly that. Second, how many unique values are there? So there will be a lot of records which has the same name, okay, or the same Twitter handle. So in that particular case, I want to know how many unique people are there. So that thing is 90. Who is in here, the top in just like in the last case with numerical values, we had max here. The top basically means this is the most frequent uh, name in the entire column. And the frequency for that particular one is this much. Okay. So this is a basic description. So based on the kind of data that you have, you will get different uh, results for the same description. So whatever makes sense is provided in that particular description look into difference. Uh, now, instead of the entire description, which is not a, a numerical return, you can just ask for the mean, okay? The mean for this particular points column. So the mean of all the points which are given, again, it will not include NAN values. For all the valid uh, points, the mean is 88.4, okay, out of 100. Similarly, if you have the taste name, so here the data set is not a numerical value. So it will, if you remember here, we have seen it has 19 unique values. So when I say that uh, here, give me the taster name, that is the name of the person whose Twitter handle we have collected the review from, dot unique. It will tell you all the people, all the names which are unique. So it has only 19 names. I'm not going to count, but it's just 19 that we know from here. So there are 19 unique names. Okay. So this is basically a summarization or getting the exact item that you want based on that column name. Similarly, taster dot value count. Now here, what we get is the value count for each of the items. So here we will have all the 90 names. I'm just showing five because if you go back, I'll show you in a second that the instruction is given to show only five, but here you have the, all the 19 names and how frequently did they came. Okay. And to verify that, if you see Ross, uh, Roger was with 2,500, some, uh, 25,000, some, uh, reviews is the highest one. That is the same that we have got this. Okay. The same person. Now, why is it not showing that? That will not happen when you do it in your collab or somewhere. But if you see here in the hidden code, it has mentioned that don't show results with more than five. So that option is set here so that we like if we have like thousands of names, it just doesn't uh, break the particular online system. So for that particular reason, to make sure that we only see limited items so that we get an idea and we don't have very long results, it has restricted that. But when you do it in your system, you will get all 19 names. Okay. 
so this particular thing is taken care of. So this is basically summarization of either the entire data frame that was described or you have for a particular column. Okay. So now what we have here is map. So the map is basically, as they have mentioned here, is something borrowed from, if you remember the class 11th or 12th studies, uh, domain and range. Okay, a function f of x will take value from here and map it to one value here. Okay, so that sort of thing. So map basically is used to transform certain variables. So the idea here is that if you want to modify some values, okay, for, for the entire column. So if I have, let's say, got um, a data from US and that is calculating in terms of miles, I want the data in kilometers because I don't understand the idea of like if how much is three miles. I have no idea, but I know what 1.5 kilometers is like. So to convert those sort of things or to change the name of certain things. So things like those. Okay. So here we have some examples for that. Now review underscore point underscore mean. This is just following the variable name declaration. So this basically tells that, okay, what is the point mean? That is what I'm storing here. And how do I get it? Just the same way in the data frame reviews for the point column, I want the mean. So the mean value will be stored here. Next is reviews dot point. That will tell you basically this column in this data frame dot map. Okay, now this is the map function. Inside it, it's lambda p. That is the p value has to change from p minus review mean. So this is the review mean. I have to reduce for each value of p. And that is the points. Subtract review mean and save that particular thing in the points. So now what basically has uh, happened here is, and we will study this again. So not to worry, but for those who already know what standard deviation is. So basically for any distribution, there we have a mean value. Okay, and any value which is somewhere else is this is the deviation. Okay, how much the values are away from the mean value. Okay, so in this particular case, we have a much higher deviation because points are way far from the lot of points are way far from the distribution. Whereas I have a very little deviation in this case. Okay, so that is how we measure deviation. There are a lot of implications what we can derive, what how high deviation means, what low deviation means, but. This is what deviation is from the mean, how far you are. So if you are like ahead of the mean, you will get a positive value. So your P will be greater than mean. If you are behind it, then in that particular case, you will get a negative value. So basically this thing has transformed the mean into this deviation. Okay. So this is how we can do that particular thing. Similarly, let's say you don't know Lambda, you know, the basic function. So we have another uh, function for that. That is apply, which is sort of a cousin for map. Uh, what that basically does is. It is reviews dot apply. Now I'm not saying which function you have to map something. So apply this particular thing, run this function, remean points and for this uh, axis column. So what does this thing mean? So define uh, remean rows. So whatever input for what, uh, for each of the items, uh, for each of the row, when I enter row dot points. Okay. So each, each row has all the columns. Now, for that particular row, row point will be row point minus review point mean that we have stored in the uh, in the last uh, cell as well. So this is instead of writing one line function like this. Okay, if you want to write a function like this, you can use apply and you can do that particular thing also. So what will happen in this particular case is this all the columns. So each row will have like these thirteen entries. This particular row will be sent through this. We will say row dot points. That is this particular item. So row dot points, whatever value we have here, subtract the mean value from that. So this will give me the deviation after I subtract. Okay. So this deviation and then return the row. So I have modified the value here and I have returned the row. So that will happen for this particular data frame. We'll do it for each of the rows. It is just like in the list we iterate, right? Through each of the values. Similarly, for each of the rows, we will iterate and finally, each of the rows, the point column would be changed from uh, mean to deviation. Okay. So this is another way of doing that same item. Let's see what else we can do with it. Uh, Reviews.head. Now this is just to show you that whatever modification you have done, that modification, like for example, here, all the mean values that you have changed, okay, into the deviation, that is just for this cell. Okay. The actual data is not touched. The actual data still has this. Okay. In case, let's say you actually want to make a permanent change there, then in that particular case, what you have to do is you have to say data frame, whatever the name is, save this particular result. Instead of printing this, save this result in a data frame. So that particular data frame will carry this particular data. 
but usually almost always we are not supposed to change the same data now in case even if you want to process the same data instead of reviews let make it like reviews to or reviews name or reviews deviation something like that give a name so that you still have the original data and your manipulations are stored into a different data frame okay we'll see that when we do certain projects but that's the basic idea we don't touch the main data very often uh so that particular thing is there now something okay so what they are saying is that other than these pandas itself has a inbuilt function so what do you do here you got the review mean using the main function and you say that review dot points minus review mean now the thing here is review dot points is a column okay it has all the values and review point mean this thing just has a single numerical value so this single numerical value when subtracted from this pandas is intuitive enough to see this particular thing as this that from each of the value i have to subtract the mean okay though the dimensions are, are different like this is uh, what uh, some like number of rows cross one and this is just one cross one but it will subtract each each of the values will be subtracted by the mean okay so that is uh, one intuitive uh, benefit that pandas has there's a lot of uh, that's the whole point of using such a language that is very intuitive similarly you have like okay yeah if you want to merge two columns so in that particular case review dot country plus this string plus this particular column now again if you see here also the dimensionality is this particular thing is a row this particular thing is a row and this is just one value but when you convert this what they would take is the first value from here then this dash and then the sec first value from here and this is what the new call uh, the data would actually look like okay if you want to save this then you just have to write data frame dot column name or data frame column name whatever name you have to give uh, let's say address and then this particular data would be stored in that particular column okay but as of now since they are not saving it because they just have to see you don't have to make any changes there okay now you can go ahead and practice some of the uh, problems that they have given using the same logics okay let's move on to the next video then